Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a question that came up from a previous client on how do I prefer to secure the leads coming out of the stepper motor. Now, everyone has their own arbitrary method on cable management. That being said, I'm going to cover really quick why this process that I use, I've chosen after doing numerous different methods over the years, I find that this method really, really works the best, at least for uh, most applications. Uh, what you see here before you is one of my NEMA 34s. I'm currently in the process of building a pro level system for a client. And again, I've got done with his motors and this is a prime opportunity to give you guys a visual of exactly how this process is performed. So what we've got here, nothing new, we've got that NEMA 34. I straighten out the leads, real simple. And then I take small pieces of heat shrink, depending on the size of the leads. Of course, you want it to naturally fit there. You, heat shrink, of course, comes in different shrink ratios. And you can see the little indentations and how I formulate those indentations. I take a paper towel after the heat shrink has been heated, and then I just compress it with the paper towel there. Of course, I dampen it slightly so it cools immediately. And when you do that, you get these nice little separations, and you're basically formulating all four leads into a cable format. Now, why I like this method much better than actually going with a full solid piece of heat shrink is you have maximum flexibility and you can see that right here i mean um, i have to ship this system across the country and it always terrifies me how the carriers handle everything that being said i want to make sure that not only is the equipment safe but i have to make sure that the client is going to receive something that is able to be worked into his system very easily and that's why I like this method. I give them a nice long lead. I don't cut anything. I leave the leads stock length because, again, having a longer lead is always better than having a shorter one. That being said, we still want to implement EMI protection. And you can still see um, if these leads do come out of place, all you got to do is kind of jiggle around the wire and she'll fall right back in. So you're getting the best of every world. Of course, as we solder everything, the leads do get uh, a little more jumbled, especially when we're using our GX16 5-pin connectors. And of course, I get this question a lot. Why are you using a 5-pin connector? It's because our motor cables are properly done. Uh, his motor cables are actually 18-4 double shielded. And of course, we have that drain lead. So that additional pin is for the drain to go inside the enclosure. Now, to implement EMI protection on these leads, snap on ferrite, guys. I love these units. It makes it so easy and it does not impede on the flexibility of the cable. So again, clients totally protected, unit set, double shielded cables to go from the actual chassis to the connector. And again, GX16s, this is a male GX16 buck connector and you can see it'll just screw right on the female and it'll lock in. So again, you'll destroy the connectors before they're removed. Um, I, like I said to you in the beginning of the video, you can definitely implement this cable method on virtually any motor and it's super super cheap to do and like I said you've definitely got the flexibility now I've done again I get questions all the time you know tin braided copper that's excellent um, but again you're gonna have limited flexibility uh, standard heat shrink even if you just heat shrink the ends I've done that before where you just heat shrink one end leave it loose here unshrunken and then come over here and heat shrink another end you're still gonna find flexibility is going to be hindered um, I'm not a big fan on it. This is definitely a method I recommend you guys try. And you don't even have to try it on a motor. You can try it on anything you want, but you can see just how flexible. And again, real simple. You never have to worry about heat because again, the actual cables that come with your steppers, regardless of the brand, are always usually designed around the heat that steppers produce. That's another question I always get. Stepper motors produce a lot of heat. It's a byproduct of voltage. And of course, we use overdrive ratio to get the max amount of resolution and the max amount of speed out of our system. That being said, these casings are always hot. They're also always hot because we're generating amps all the time. Unlike a regular DC motor that usually is going forward or backward or stopped, where in which case when it is stopped, it has no holding torque. It's not doing anything. Uh, therefore, it's not pulling any amps and, amps, excuse me, and therefore there's no heat. With steppers, they're always in a, a state of motion. Consider it that way because if they're going forward, they're generating heat. If they're going backwards, they're generating heat. And if they're idle, they're still producing holding torque so we can hold our position on our, on our table. So therefore, you're generating heat there as well. So just keep that in mind. And again, like I said, I hope this uh, video has been helpful. I hope you guys uh, can get a lot out of it. And again, implement it with your own system. Try it out. See if you like it. You can try it on different formats, whether it be uh, any size motor. But also, uh, I have liked doing this method too on different types of accessories that have 
uh, individual leads. It works extremely well, regardless of how many leads, as long as your heat shrink is wide enough, you're golden. So again, guys, if you have any questions, please send them directly to storm2313 at gmail.com. You can request quotes, their questions, you name it. Um, I have been extremely busy. Um, I'm unfortunately dealing with the death in the family right now, so uh, things have been really hard on trying to keep up with everything and then, of course, dealing with that tragedy. Um, but uh, I am getting to my email, so I'll do my best to answer everybody's question. To all of my subscribers, I love you guys. You guys are great. And again, I hope the video was helpful. I will put a link to my eDealer Direct store. You can also contact me there in the description. Thank you all for your time. Take care.